Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now, the button below. Just a reminder for myself that when Sayyidina Muhammad Sayyidina, somebody was wondering what we kept saying that why repeating always the teaching and at least three times the teaching has to be repeated because everyone has a different understanding from the very words that come from our lips to the time it hits your ears and your brain and heart interpret can be oceans of difference. And by continuously repeating the teachings then we have an ability to reprocess and maybe analyze again and that aha moment may come. Wow, now I understand what you're talking about. Last night when we ended and we talked amongst ourselves, there may have been an understanding that these discussions of the nafs were maqams that you were supposed to reach to and they're not. And this way of realities is not understood by insan. And Allah especially for those whom has guided to tariqahs, He wants to grant them maqamul mahmud, the highest level of realities into the haqqaiqs, into the oceans of Sayyidina Muhammad That's why we describe that you must be fed first from ilm yaqeen. If you are in a true tariqah and a true guide, the food that they must be feeding you is the ilm yaqeen because you have to eat from it so that one day you can speak from it. If you're not eating ilm yaqeen, how are you going to reach to speak from ilm yaqeen? Means that that reality will never open upon the servant and it's not something that you ascend and want to get to. Its description was for you to understand where you're at because the tricks of the nafs makes every servant to feel that they have achieved real high realities. So when you describe from this point going through a barrage of difficulties, going through horrific types of testing, going through every type of desert of difficulty and to one day reach to an oasis and a fountain of marifah was to show how difficult that path is. And that when somebody thinks they've arrived, that's why they said at Lawama, it's not that you arrived at fana but you became helpless and hopeless. So you basically reached a point of what you thought is nirvana and reaching but no, it's your hopeless state and your mind and your nafs has convinced you, you have arrived and you have not even begun to knock upon the door. So these are what Allah want the servants of haqqaiqs and why they've been enrolled. You did not find this tariqah through your cleverness, you've given too much credit to yourself. This is a grant from Allah and when Allah gives a grant He has an expectation that you are to achieve towards this insana kamil, to be with them and to be common. And if you're clever enough and have a himma and turn your energy of negativity and anger and aggression, turn that fire off from the world and turn it upon yourself, one day it becomes the himma for you to ascend. You're going to take an outward thrust and that's burning on everybody angry about everything with everyone and you're going to be taught on how to use that energy so it's an internal himma to want to conquer, want to do the most they can for Allah and that's why I did described in elevator 3, 4, 5, 6, it was everything about pleasing Allah 
When they overcame their animalistic character, their whole life was about how to please Allah And we describe it as up but it's really down. You don't ascend and rise, it's not an office and you're not in your business. When you get a raise at your office they give you a desk with a window, say, congratulations you have now been given a desk and here's a window and you have now a window office. With Allah His congratulation is that He has smashed you. So we're not getting it. It's not going up but it's when Allah begin to humiliate the servant because He wants them to be humble. When He begin to test the servant, we said before, if you're appearing then they are disappearing. So this binary code and the reality of this code is then Allah will deflate you until you feel oh you're being crushed from every direction. And as you're being deflated the one is appearing in your spiritual training. If you're training, if you're not training it's just a lot of pain, a lot of difficulty, a lot of test, a lot of sadness. But when Allah wants the servant to reach Marifa, said, why you don't sit with them and they teach you how to connect your heart? So that when the dunya crushes you, the heavens welcomes you. Not a path of sitting and crying but a path of understanding that your hypocrisy and that you don't want to die in a state of munafiq in which you present yourself as something but in reality you're something else. So all of these teachings about the self so that I can look at it and say, where do I really fit in? Because I'm going to lie to the world and give a face to them that I'm something but only you truly know where you are. But the hope is and where to be happy is that if Allah enrolled us in these realities, He wants us to reach, reach the reality, achieve these realities, come against yourself, deflate yourself, sit with them. And that's why Surat Al-Kahf described, don't talk in their presence, don't try to show any knowledge around them, come as nothing, as nothing. Allah ordered. And Sayyidina Khidr told Sayyidina Musa salam, with all the knowledge of Sayyidina Musa salam who speaks to Allah you won't have patience to be with me. How can you have patience when your knowledge is not complete? So whatever two things you think you know and you want to use those in your head to reach to marifa and enter with it the soup of philosophies and, and thoughts and, and, and theories, it will never reach. This is not a theory, this is not a philosophy, this is a haqqaiq. The shaykhs who train and teach it, they witness through their heart the reality. Not something that they imagine but Allah has made their heart to witness. So when you hear these maqams know that they've been dressed in those maqams. They witness those realities, their soul is of a heavenly nature, they operate with their soul and the haqqaiqs flowing from them from ilmu yaqeen then gives an understanding of where you're listening from and what fountain are you taking from. So that what? To know where we are because this is the hadith of Prophet who knows himself will know his Lord. If you don't know yourself then you don't know what Lord you're serving. If you think you're trying to serve Allah but you may only be serving yourself, you become content with yourself, the position of yourself and the delusion of yourself and that's the danger. Then Allah describes in Qur'an what? Have you seen those? They make their Lord their desires, they make their desire their Lord. Means whatever they imagine they say, this Allah and Allah accepts it. And only Allah's responsibility 
is to come and teach, no, no these are these realities, these are the realities of the self and take your path and the path now is awaiting you. If you run from it, it will catch you in the grave and that's 70,000 times more difficult. And that's why they describe what's coming upon this earth is a tremendous cleansing. Because Allah is just, loves all His creation, expects all His creation to achieve these realities. If they're not going to achieve it by their spiritual training, they will be cleansed at the hands of men who have no rahmah, no mercy within their hearts. War is a cleansing. When two people begin to beat each other, they're cleaning each other like hammam, scrubbing. It's all this curse upon the earth. You don't want to reach me peacefully? Then they reach through their war and their killing of each other, their harming of each other. So it's not something to run and think, I can choose a, a different way to Allah choose whatever way you want. But whatever is waiting for us and all this earth is unimaginable difficulties. Better to put upon ourselves our own understanding. That's why they teach and the way that they teach, when you say that, an abdukul ajeezu, da'ifu, miskinu, zalimu, jahal, you're telling Allah I don't need you to beat me. I don't need you Ya Rabbi to send difficulty to me to humble me. I've already agreed with you, I'm nothing. I'm ignorant, I'm poor, I don't want to be prideful and boastful, I have nothing. And if I made a mistake I already told you I was nothing. Now look at the Imams when you go to these places of worship, one he's alam of this, he's ulama of that, this one this, they're all sitting and praising each other that this one about to talk and his one's like this, this one like that, this, this is a… is the… just praising each other. We don't even know how to do that. So when we go somewhere and they surprise you just immediately start to talk and they're all upset to how you didn't praise all of us, we praised you. So you don't know how to do that. We weren't raised in, in that scenario. So it means then this whole life of ours was continuously deflate oneself, acknowledge our lowness. And then you begin to understand the du'as of these awliyaullah. When they say that they're nothing, they're actually rising towards the heavens. They took a path in which to have extreme difficulty put upon them. Your determination of your saying you're nothing is nothing. When Allah accepts your du'a, he will make everyone treat you like nothing and you'll be years in that desert. It's not something that passed in one day. It's years of traversing a, a desert in which everyone curses you, comes against you, disavows you. And we have it on our website how much they curse the website and the knowledge is. And Mawlana said, Shaykh Nazim said, may they poo poo upon their head. And he used the real word, I gave the more cleaner word for television because they are attacking, attacking. This is a website dedicated to Muhammadan realities. So when they called Shaykh Nazim and said they're attacking from every direction because this is the way, this is the way of throwing rocks, Shaykh Nazim's response is poo-poo on their head with a more descriptive, nicer word. <laughs> it means our way is through difficulty. Through oceans of continuous testing, then you are somebody who's like dust. Not through your own words and your own determination, but when Allah describes and when Allah is satisfied and when Sayyidina Muhammad says, Bas, enough, this, this one is taking a big pounding. So, the purpose of these teachings was for us to be clarified on this horizon and this movement. 
The good news Allah wants us to achieve it. The better news is these awliyaullah through their knowledges and their madad and their support they uplift it and the path immediately becomes real through the testing and difficulties that people begin to experience. And that's a sign that the path is real, the testing is real. We pray that Allah give us a strength and an awareness. We said that when people talk about taqwa and they think they have a consciousness and their, their taqwa is a sense of anger and rigidness. When people are describing taqwa and that they have taqwa and they think they have a consciousness, they misunderstood what taqwa. By these knowledges of the nafs they release these for us to understand. They think that what Allah wants is to be rigid, to be hard, to be tough. And the new converts are worst at that, that they overcompensate their flaws and think that God wants them to be hard and that you came to Islam to be hard, to be critical because that's what Allah wants. Then a studying and that's the sickness. If you study the levels of the soul, that the level of faith and these seven maqams or seven realities of the nafs, you would understand that the highest levels is all muhabbat and love. So the lowest level is the anger and the amara where you come in thinking that this is what Allah wants, no that's actually what you are and you've cloaked yourself with this understanding of faith but you're an amara person, an angry person, a, a critical person. An amara tajalli is dressing you and you've dressed your Islam with that. You meet them everywhere. Very hard, very tough, everything and they feel their, their angry face is like, wow they have taqwa. No, you have no taqwa at all, nothing, nothing from you is of taqwa. It's just qadab and anger and all of it is outside of belief. And what real taqwa and what these, these realities of the nafs is showing you that as you're rising from amara you must be fed Divinely knowledges. And then as they want to lift you from lawama to mulhamma you have to be taught how to see for you're blind and what you're not using is the spiritual eyes and Allah doesn't want you to use the dunya eyes. What He cares for your dunya physicality? You're not going to find Allah with this dunya physicality. So then you must be taught with spiritual eyes and only those whom been taught with spiritual eyes can achieve taqwa. If you're not Ahlul Basira and not from the people whose hearts are opening you have no taqwa. You're in an imitated ocean of consciousness. For how could you have God consciousness and you don't see anything? For Allah described blind here, blind there. Meaning what? If you are blind in this dunya, you are considered blind in your akhirah. So mean how could you have a consciousness? Consciousness means to be conscious of God. And that you feel God in everything, you feel Allah in everything that you do. So means Ahlul Basira when they're training and training, why then they're training? They're training to achieve a consciousness, ittaqullah wa alimukumullah. Wasn't that the mutma'inna? The light is coming, they're training to close their eyes, they, they're cutting themselves from dunya. And it's not easy to sit and make time and they have every excuse, oh this busy, this busy, yeah okay everything's busy but you want to go into the grave like that? And they sit at night 
and they make their connection, make their connection, meditate, practice. That's why the third level was teaching you, make your meditation, keep your connection and your communication, help me, help me, help me, Nur Muhammad. I'm visualizing my heart is opening, I'm trying to breathe, I'm trying to keep my connection. Only at that time when you make this connection and you feel the light entering and you feel the souls of those, that reality that's in front of you, your salah is becoming real, Ya Salaamu Alaika Ayyuhan Nabi wa Ibadillahi Saliheen, I feel when I'm praying and I'm in my tahiyat, I feel presence of Sayyidina Muhammad the energy. You don't feel then the Ibadullahi Saliheen, all those pious Saliheen. When you begin to feel them and feel their energy, now this energy that opens and the light that begins to open into your heart, you now understand the ocean of taqwa. Because if they start to open and open, your life then becomes that opening. The fires comes through that opening, the knowledges that they're teaching through that opening. Your whole existence through that opening. So imagine in dunya somebody said, all your money is cut as of tomorrow. We don't care how you're gonna get it from your mother, your father, your business, your job, nothing comes to you. You can't pay your rent, you can't eat any food, you can't take care of your family. What would you do? Go to the bridge and jump because you can no longer exist on this earth. No government will help you, Allah says, you're cut. That's your taqwa of dunya. Imagine then when your heart is open and you do these funky things and Allah send a signal to your heart, it's cut for you, correct yourself. That's taqwa because they have something to lose. And they don't want to lose it. Someone who doesn't feel anything, see anything, sense anything, how could he have a consciousness of God? He's behind a steel wall, what does it matter if the steel is one foot thick or seven feet thick? He's behind steel, doesn't see or feel anything, there's no consciousness. So then the, how do they, they compensate? Then they become angry to show, we have consciousness. No, they missed it. When they study the, the reality of the nafs, your consciousness would have made you fall in love with Allah As Allah take away the parda and the light enter into your heart, Allah is love, Allah is, is every beatific reality that could be imagined. And what He requires is the good character and what you don't know Allah says, don't matter. If you have good character with Me, I will teach you, I will send angels to teach you, I'll send all precious souls to sit and begin to teach you. Because when Allah teaches, the whole of Allah's kingdom will teach that servant. And it's all based off of love and adab and they find Allah teaching them in everything. And that's what that hadith was, the maqam al is to see Allah because it's two-sided. When you see Allah then know Allah seeing you. For if you see Allah it's not obvious then Allah seeing you too. You understand your whole life is under the command of His might and His majesty and everything beautific is coming from that reality. Everything is based off of love created every creation out of its love. So the khuluq must have changed towards muhabbat, compassion, everything beautific, every good characteristic, every type of forgiving characteristic because they've been forgiven. They know that one day somebody is a kafir, the next day he's a believer. One day he thinks he believes and Allah throws him into the ocean of disbelief. And all of it in the hand of Allah the twist between fingers, your faith and, dis and having no faith. So they understood the consciousness of Allah So there is no consciousness without the heart opening and to be from Ahlul Basira. So then why they're struggling to reach all of these realities? Why they struggle against all of their bad characteristics? 
to achieve what Allah wants them to achieve and that is the greatest gift. For if Allah… if you love Allah love God Almighty and says, I have all of this bounty for you and you say, no I don't want it, I want to sit and play with shaitan, no it's impossible. That means then you don't have that love for the Divine. I want to sit and play with shaitan, I want to do every type of uh, thing that, that make you to be angry with me, for what? We pray that Allah give us understanding of the path. And this golden ticket that Allah has given to us, 499 million and 9999 of your siblings did not grant it a ticket onto this earth. Because when your father was with your mother and his seed went into the Kaaba, 500 million seeds and hajis are released, one seed got in. So you're already the ticket winner to be on this earth. And Allah asking, so why, why did you get saved? What were you going to do with it? You're not going to rise towards your reality? You're just going to take this ticket and do nothing upon this earth? Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.